Hey everybody, welcome back. In today's community conversation, we have El Paso County Commissioner Sergio Coronado here with us this morning. Good morning. Good morning. You actually represent parts of West and Northeast El Paso all the way to Anthony, Texas. Thank you so much for being here. Well, thank you all for, for inviting me for this conversation. We really appreciate it. Yes, thank you. We'll get right to it. So Commissioner, let's talk about engagement with the community. So community engagement, why, do, why is that so important and how does it help? Well, it's very important. And right now, actually, what we're doing is uh, we're having meetings throughout the entire county. We've already had, uh, this is a phase one. We're doing regarding our capital infrastructure needs and wants. And so we've been going out to the community. Three, uh, there will be three meetings in each of the precincts. That's phase one, and then phase two will be uh, more meetings in those uh, in the precincts. The next ones for the phase one is Chapin and Fabens, and so they'll be at the libraries August second and third, and that'll be at five thirty in the libraries. Yeah, if people, real quick, if they want to find out like where these meetings are being held, like is there somewhere on the county website that they can go to find out that information? Absolutely, they can go to El Paso EP County .com. Okay. Go to our website and they'll have information there uh, on when these meetings will hold, be held with respect to the phase two. Okay. And these are, it's very important because we want to make sure we engage the community right. as to what our needs are and what our wants are. And we want public engagement with respect to all those issues because it's really, you know, the public has to pay for these bonds. Right. And so we want to make sure that we engage them and ask them for their input on, on these important projects. And there's a lot of projects that we need. Yeah. Absolutely, and you know, you're very busy. You have a lot of things that you're working on for the county. One of those programs that El Paso County is currently working on is the El Paso Promise Program, something you're very passionate about. Talk to us a little bit about that and what that entails. Absolutely, it's, it's one of the things that when I left the school district, people tell me, you're not gonna work on education. Au contraire, mm -hmm. we are working on education. We're working on workforce training. Uh, basically, this Promise Program is to make sure that we get those individuals that have not continued their training or education after high school. And so we wanna make sure that, uh, what we find out is a lot of them don't do that because they have a lot of obstacles. They don't have the money, they've got commitments at home, they have to work, they have kids, and that keeps them from you know, being able to com you know, go forward and get their workforce training or education. What the Promise Program means to do is eliminate all those obstacles. And now our Promise Program, there's uh, three in Texas right now, it's Dallas County, uh, the Alamo Promise in San Antonio and Tyler. We're gonna be the fourth one in the state. What's really uh, important about ours and different is that we're gonna focus initially on phase one on those justice involved individuals. Uh, what we find out is that 93% of the people that get arrested have nothing more than a high school diploma, 93%. Wow. So we know that a lot of these individuals who don't continue their training or certifications in some kind of job uh, or, or go on to either an associate's degree it, what, what happens is they get involved in the system, in the justice system, yeah. and now we have to spend resources on this. This way we want to divert them from the system, want to make sure we get them uh, some training, workforce training, or get them into uh, getting an associate's degree and maybe on to UTEP, uh, and make sure that they get a good job. What we find out is those people that do, don't come back and they become productive members of society. It's a great program for sure. Um, Commissioner, also we wanted to talk about, um, there's a bond that will, bond that you guys are putting up. So what is that going to do um, for the certain regions of, of the community? Well, there's a lot of proposed needs uh, for the county that we have. Uh, some of those have to do with infrastructure needs and maintenance needs like HVAC, you know, things like HVAC at the county courthouse. Okay. Uh, the juvenile justice system, our juvenile detention department needs help. We need to make sure that we provide and expand it actually. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have needs at you know, a lot of our parts. We have space needs uh, down at the justice system. Uh, and so all these areas take money to construct because within our budget, we just don't have it. Yeah. Um, we have a lot of mandated services we have to provide. It takes up about 54% of our, of our tax money, of our budget is taken up by uh, unfunded mandates from the state. So all these other areas we have to, you know, it's a tax burden on the community. Right, and absolutely. so we have to make sure that we make uh, smart and important decisions and in investing in these uh, infrastructure needs so that it costs us less in the future. Right. And speaking of projects, let's really quick talk about parks. You mentioned that. What did you want to tell the community well, about that? Well, my team has specifically been focusing on, on our parks, uh, not just within precinct four, but we've planted, uh, we've had two planting uh, uh, opportunities uh, in, we had one in October and one in February. And what we've been able to do, our precinct is plant 75 mature trees at Gallegos Park. 
We're also going to be planting some in uh, Westway, which is in our precinct. But we also, part of our needs and part of our wants for parts like Cascarate, which is, I think is a really diamond in the rough, is what we want to do is convert that to make, make it really a destination place. Yeah. We want to make it something like similar to the Riverwalk in San Antonio. Well, we'll have restaurants on one side, uh, other areas, other excursions there that we'll, we'll be able to do. Uh, we want to make sure that we, you know, uh, invest in that park. Like I said, it's really a diamond in the rough. Yeah. We want to make it, you know, beautify it and make sure that we invest in it. I think the people of El Paso will support something like that. Maybe a visitor center. Oh, for sure. I think people in El Paso love Ascarate, mm -hmm. especially this weekend. That's where a lot of people flock to for the Easter weekend. So I think that's a great idea. Commissioner, thank you so much for being well, with us here this morning. Thank you very much. We really appreciate you, especially on this Good Friday. Thank, thank you all very you. much. Yes, a lot of exciting things happening in the county. And we'll have this entire community conversation if you want to go recap it for yourself, or if you only got to half of it on our website, kfoxtv.com. We'll be right back.